Hello everyone, back to you into today's second video. Doing guys, well, this Sunday roundup for today's second video. So, this is going to be your Sunday afternoon eclectic mix of this map. We're going to be looking at things like sea surface temperature anomalies, solar activity, Arctic oscillation, North Atlantic oscillation, uh, Southern oscillation index, and the weather for the next week, 10 days, and beyond as well. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. And I'll talk you through everything that we're going to be looking at in a moment. Just to say that uh, the first video released today was the first summer 2020 season one round. Getting around 12 long range models together to see uh, what we're all showing for the summer for over the first time this season. Quite an interesting watch. There's no clear uh, clear cut uh, trained at the moment within uh, the long range model output. But um, there's a few interesting uh, ideas within uh, some of those long range models. So have a look at that and see what's going on there. Tonight we're going to have the first Easter update. So we're going to begin the countdown to Easter at Gaswell Bids. Um, tonight and now before we do anything else i've got to say a big thank you to our latest paypal donors who have had a donation through paypal uh for gas web it's and it's from katrine baso so i'm going to say a big thank you to katrine baso thanks so much katrine uh for your donation katrine has set up a facebook uh group and i'm going to show you that page um in a moment but i before i do anything else i just want to say a big big thank you to uh katrine um for that donation thank you so much katrine for doing that if you'd like to become a paypal donor to gas all you need to do is um come to the gas web it's paypal page sign uh uh, into your PayPal account and then give whatever donation you would like to Gals Web You're helping us to pay uh, for GalsWebVis.com and keep the content online. These are very, very difficult times for everybody. Uh, I appreciate that. So only donate if you can afford to, of course. Uh, but if you can afford a donation, uh, it is uh, well, very well received uh, by Gazweb is um, because the money we get from advertisements at the moment due to the economic decline of the coronavirus is um, is much less than uh, would normally be the case. So it is very helpful to have uh, have these extra revenue streams. So big thanks to all of our donors. You can also, of course, become a patron uh, for Gazweb is so you've got 64 patrons so far. Hello and a big thank you to our 64 patrons. So if you'd like to become a patron of Gazwebbies, you need to come to the Gazwebbies Patreon page and sign up for a Patreon account, assuming you don't really have one. And then you can give an ongoing monthly donation to Gazwebbies. It can be anything from $1 a month upwards. And a big, big thank you for doing that. Whether you do it through PayPal or whether you do it through um, Patreon, you're going to get a mention in the videos. We'll give you a shout out. I will say thank you so much for doing that, as long as you uh, want one, uh, of course. So um, we can also uh, sort of uh, publicise your business, or um, we can give a mention to somebody else. Maybe you want a birthday mention to somebody else. Any Anything uh, like that is absolutely fine. Just let us know when you make your donation uh, how you would like that uh, mention. So I did say that Katrine has set up a uh, Facebook uh, group. So it's the Thurrock Viral Kindness uh, Group. Um, so the description of this uh, Facebook group uh, says a lot of us are stuck at home right now, but physical distancing doesn't have to mean isolation and loneliness. This group is for anyone who wants to connect, share, identify ways we can help each other, protect the most vulnerable and spread a little hope, love and kindness at a time we need it more than ever. Uh, so, yes, so say all of us. Well done, Katrine, for setting up your uh, your kindness group on uh, Facebook. I'm going to leave the uh, link in the description with the video at Gazovis to this Facebook uh, group. You can go to your Facebook page and you can uh, join the group if you would like to do that. And uh, that's how we're going to get through this uh, crisis. We're going to get through it by everybody coming together and uh, looking after one another and looking out for one another. And we will get through the crisis, of, as I've been saying. Um, and uh, we're going to do it by uh, everybody coming together. And uh, groups such as this uh, are, are, are very, very useful indeed for helping everybody uh, come together and um, you know, look out for one another. So, uh, yes, I'm going to leave a link to this uh, Facebook group in the description with the video at YouTube. Uh, please uh, give it a watch, give it a look, and um, join the group if you would like to do that. Well done, Katrine, and a uh, big, big thank you to you, not only for your donation for Gals Webbies, but also, of course, for setting up this uh, kindness group. And um, that's how we're going to get through this crisis. We're going to get through it by everybody coming together 
and uh, being kind and looking out for one another and uh, things will get better uh, and uh, yes well done Katrine for doing that Right, so we're going to start off with the video, and we're going to uh, begin at XC Weather. We have broken uh, a pressure record today. Uh, for western parts of Scotland and uh, close to Northern Ireland, we have a um, the, or, the uh, yellow dots there flashing away are showing that we have a maximum air pressure of 1,051 millibars uh, across western parts of Scotland today. Very intensely high pressure, and that is the highest uh, pressure uh, ever recorded in the month of March, I believe. So, um, really, really high pressure, not just in western Scotland, that's where the highest pressure is, but all areas have got uh, high pressure, 1,032 millibars is like the lowest pressure today down in this far south visa corner and that's pretty high pressure at the best of times when you get to 1030 millibars so got a big area of high pressure today bringing in uh northeasterly winds and they're bringing cold air uh as well so uh these are the temperatures uh latest temperatures at uh, just gone 11 o'clock in the morning uh, the highest temperatures are in the southeast corner, where you'd expect them to be, I suppose. And, uh, well, you can't really call those high temperatures, but the end of March flashing away there at just 7 degrees Celsius in a few of those stations. But further north, we've got a lot of places that are stuck at around 2 degrees at the moment. That's like below high uh, in uh, northern and western parts of the country. So it's a cold, uh, it's a cold old morning and it feels even colder than the temperature suggests with uh, with the wind chill. So um, uh, really unusually uh, cold air mass, <coughs> excuse me, and I believe we are bringing in the minus 10 Celsius ice firm for the first time uh, since probably the winter of 2018-19 when we have a beast from the east. So um, it's very unusually cold air mass that we've got at the moment and uh, this is reflective by the temperatures. It's all being caused by the intensely high uh, pressure that we've got out to the west of Scotland. Things are going to get a little bit less cold in the next couple of days, um, but for the time being, wintry showers and cold northeasterly winds definitely uh, the order of the day through uh, many parts of the country. These are how the uh, sea surface temperature anomalies uh, across the world were looking when we did last week's Gales were this Sunday round. We've got three areas of interest, of course. We've got the Enso region uh, just here. We've got the Northern Pacific up there, and then we've got the North Atlantic over here. So that's how the sea surface temperature anomalies were looking uh, last week. This is how the sea surface temperature anomalies are looking uh, this week. And we can see that in the Enso region, very little change. We have got a small area of cold of an average sea surface temperature anomalies just starting to emerge there. So, uh, yes, we've got a small area of cold and average sea surface so temperature anomalies beginning to appear there. It looks like it's connected back towards a deeper area of uh, cold and average sea surface temperature, temperature anomalies close to Mexico. Uh, that's all quite shallow waters, uh, though. This area is, is quite shallow in terms of uh, the depths of the uh, Pacific Ocean. So it could be that that's been stirred up a little bit by an area of low pressure, maybe some sort of storm has just stirred up the um, the uh, ocean a little bit there. Uh, otherwise, we're around Enso neutral, uh, of course, as we have been over the past few weeks and months. Uh, we're expected to remain at Enso neutral in the coming weeks, months. Well, we may start to move towards La Nina. It's very much up in the air, you pardon the pun, at the moment, whether we are going to pull off uh, a La Nina through, uh, through the summer and into the second half of the year. A lot of moral disagreement about that at the moment. Uh, we did the uh, ENSO update for March on Friday, so you want to know more about the forecast of where ENSO is likely to go over the next few months. Will it go to landing? or will it stay at ENSO neutral? Have a look at Friday's ENSO update. Going further north into the northern uh, Pacific Ocean, so you know, if we can just go back to last week, that's how things look last week, that's how things look now. Very little change up there. It has warmed up a little bit uh, in that area, close to Alaska, Canada and North America and out into the middle part of the uh, Pacific Ocean just there, North Pacific Ocean uh, we've got that area colder than average sea surface temperature anomaly it's very little change there over the past uh, week and then looking at the um, Atlantic, so that's how things are looking in the Atlantic 
uh, last week, uh, particularly with that colder than average area of sea surface temperature anomalies in the northern Atlantic. This is the latest. Uh, so very little change there. Uh, still colder than average, quite significantly so in the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean, warmer than average through the tropical uh, Atlantic Ocean, and then uh, near normal, really, through the central part of the North Atlantic Ocean. So very little change in terms of what the oceans are doing at the moment we do need to keep an eye to see whether this small area of cold and average sea surface temperature is here in the east of the pacific ocean whether that develops and strengthens further if it does that could be the beginnings of the landing but at this stage I, I wouldn't want to say that's what's going to happen because as i say it's only just appeared they're relatively shallow waters that we've got uh, over in the eastern part of the uh, extra Pacific Ocean, and that might just be stirred up by an area of low pressure. So we'll see over the next two, three, four weeks whether that begins to develop into uh, into anything or not. Otherwise, the uh, sea surface temperature anomalies are relatively stable in the northern Atlantic and also in the northern um, Pacific Ocean. Southern Oscillation Index uh, is from uh, Queensland Government, which is part of the Bureau of Meteorology, uh, of course. So Southern Oscillation Index is uh, reflecting the atmospheric state down in the Southern Pacific Ocean. It's measuring air pressures between Darwin and uh, Tahiti. When the SOI is in its negative phase, then the atmospheric setup will be reflective of El Nino. When the SOI is in its positive phase, the atmospheric setup will be reflective of La Nina. Uh, the SY has actually been dropping over the past uh, week or two, or week to 10 days, probably. Uh, so if we go back to the 18th of March, you can, um, 17th of March, so you have some really quite negative numbers there, down to minus 14 and minus 21. And recent days have also been quite negative uh, as well. 19th of March at minus 14, 23rd of March at minus 12, 26th of March at minus 10, 27th of March at minus 18, 28th of March at minus 15, and the latest day, but ahead of us, of course, Australia, 29th March, coming out at minus 11. All those numbers are telling us that the atmospheric state is reflective of El Nino at the moment. And it's quite a prolonged period now of negativity of the SY. That completely goes against the idea of a La Nina setting up, by the way. This is causing the 30-day SOI average, which we can see on this graph, to do a little bit of a plummet. So uh, around um, 10 days ago, the SOI 30-day average was up here, very close to neutral. You can see now it's going down to really quite a negative uh, level, close to minus 7 on the uh, on the graph there. So um, quite significant developments with the SOI actually at the moment. If that was to carry on for several more weeks, then we would probably have to start thinking about an El Nino getting going uh, for the summer. But uh, of course, only, uh, only around um, 10 days to a couple of weeks worth of uh, data. And before that, the SOI was uh, relatively positive on some days, example, 4th and 5th of March uh, there at plus 7, respectively. But uh, certainly a, a, a plummet in the, in the SOI like that goes uh, against the idea of, uh, of a La Nina that is much more reflective of an El Nino type pattern. It may start to come back up again uh, in the next few days. We shall wait and see what happens with the SOI, of course. Uh, this is how the solar disk is looking on our side of this day from solarham.net, looking for visible sunspot regions and uh, struggling to find them. I have to say we have a blank solar disk once again. There are no sunspots on the solar disk on our side of this day. So therefore, uh, solar activity is at very low levels and is expected to remain at very low levels for the next three days. That's uh, told to us by the report at soham.net. We haven't got the solar activity tracker today. James is still recovering from his operation. But we have got uh, this being sent through by our good friend uh, Richard Shaw. This is showing spotless days uh, by year. So uh, currently for 2020, we have had 69 days without any sunspots. That is 77% of the year. That's deep, deep solar minimum. And uh, it is on a par with uh, 2019 as well. 2019 had 281 days without any visible sunspots. Again, that was 77% of uh, the year. So the, this is really, really deep solar minimum 
type stuff. When, you, when you've got 77% uh, of a year, with, of a calendar the year, without any uh, sunspots, that's really, truly deep solar minimum. And it's going on into 2020 as well. I would suspect in the second half of this year, we'll probably start moving in towards solar cycle 25, and we will probably start to see a very modest increase in sunspots in the second half. Uh, of the year, but at the moment, the uh, deep, deep solar minimum of solar cycle number 24 uh, does continue. And a big thank you to Richard uh, for sending that through. We're going to keep a close eye on uh, solar activity, of course, in the coming weeks and months, as we always do at Gaz Weather Vids. Uh, this is how things look in terms of Eurasian snow cover and Arctic sea ice extinct. So uh, the um, snow line has actually pushed back a little bit further westwards. You remember last week, the snow line had pulled back from Western Russia. Much of Western Russia, the far West Russia, still snow free, actually. But I think the snow line has pushed back further uh, westwards a little bit over the uh, past few days, actually. Much of Northern Scandinavia still snow covered as well. Southern parts of Sweden snow free. That's been the case throughout most of the winter, of course. And many parts of Europe... Um, not much snow cover around. Of course, we are going well on into the spring now. So away from mountainous areas like the Alps, for example, you will expect to see uh, a great deal of snow cover now across particularly central and western parts of uh, Europe. In terms of Arctic sea ice extent, still lots of uh, sea ice extent, um, still lots of sea ice, uh, uh, as we can see from that uh, yellow area. That's where we've got all of the Arctic sea ice going on. However, we have seen a bit of a drop, quite a dramatic drop, actually, in the past few days for um, Arctic sea ice extent. So the blue line here is on this chart is showing uh, how Arctic sea ice extent has been performing through this season. We reached our peak of uh, Arctic sea ice, sea ice extent back in the earlier part of March. That's where we are right now. But you see it has ticked down quite significant, re significantly, really, um, compared to uh, a few days ago. If we see how that compares to the 10-year uh, averages. So let's put in... Uh, the 2011 to 2019 average, first of all. And we have now dropped down to that level. You know, you know if you've been watching these study roundups week by week, that through um, this winter and into the early part of the spring, we've generally been trending above the 2011 to 2019 uh, Arctic Science average, but we've now uh, dropped back to, uh, to that average. If we put in the 2001 to 2010 average, uh, we've, we've dropped away from that, we've fallen away from that. That. Uh, we have been on a par with the 2001 to 2010 uh, Arctic size extent average through most of this winter, but uh, this drop in Arctic size extent has meant that we have uh, fallen away from 2001 to 2010 average. And of course, we've always been well below 1991 to 2019. 79 to 1990 the green and orange lines. Uh, we've always been uh, quite a long way away from uh, those old um, averages. So quite a plummet in Arctic surface extent has taken place over the past few days. That may bounce back up. It uh, may um, start to uh, drop even further. We should wait and see. And of course, we are moving now into the Arctic sea ice melt season. That's going to begin, well, it is beginning, obviously, right now, actually. And uh, it's going to carry on through the spring and into the summer. We will bottom out with Arctic surface extent uh, in September, the early part of September, and then, of course, as we go through to the through the autumn into winter, Arctic CSX set will start to come back up again. So we shall wait and see how that's going to uh, play out. Uh, Arctic Oscillation observed and forecast is looking like this. So the black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. Red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Uh, remember, it's just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state, uh, similar to the Sun Oscillation Index, really, uh, which is measuring air pressure between Darwin and Tahiti. This time, Arctic Oscillation is measuring air pressure in the Arctic. And when the Arctic Oscillation is in its positive phase, then you've got low pressure up in the Arctic. When the Arctic Oscillation is in its negative phase, you will have low pressure. Uh, no, you won't. When the Arctic Oscillation is in its positive phase, you will have low pressure over the Arctic. When the Arctic Oscillation is in its negative phase, you will have high pressure over the Arctic. You're going to have blocking over the Arctic when the Arctic Oscillation is uh, negative. 
So, uh, we have, of course, had a very, very positive Arctic Oscillation throughout this uh, winter. And uh, we've seen a little bit of a drop in the AOVO over the past week. So, about a week ago, we was up there. Still very positive with the Arctic Oscillation. But uh, we are now down to around neutral with the uh, AO. And the GFS Ensembles are forecasting that the Arctic Oscillation is going to stay quite close to neutral. Maybe even by early April going slightly negative. Uh, but so Certainly um, much, much reduced compared to where the AO has been over the past few months. And uh, around neutral is uh, what the GFS ensembles are forecasting for the AO over the next week or two. That tells us we've seen an, a, a seen a decrease in uh, we've seen a decrease in low pressure over the Arctic, and we've probably raised pressure uh, a little bit over the Arctic. We've probably got a little bit of blocking. Um, and that might explain the uh, slight plummet in Arctic sea ice extinct, of course. Now, the NEO has moved or is very rapidly moving into a negative phase. So, again, this is just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state, this time looking at the North Atlantic measuring air pressure between Darwin and uh, Tahiti. So, the black line shows where we've been with the NEO, red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the NEO to go. Uh, now, the Arctic Oscillation at the moment is just sort of uh, weakly positive. It's around there, but it has dropped quite a bit from where it was around a week ago. But you'll notice that the GFS ensembles are taking the NEO uh, negative as we go into the opening days of April. That's the first time we have had a solidly negative period uh, with the NEO since way back into the autumn. You have to go back to the autumn for the last time we had a prolonged negative NEO period. Uh, lasting more than a week or, or, or so. Um, so it's been quite a while coming, but uh, definite changes in the North Atlantic. And of course, that's associated with the colder conditions that we've got at the moment and high pressure setting up in uh, the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean, which forces um, lower pressure through the central part of the North Atlantic Ocean through the uh, Azores region. So negative NAO, near neutral AO, very different atmospheric setup, therefore, compared to what we've had through the winter just gone and into early spring. Uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. So, the next couple of weeks, we're going to graze, uh, which is furrow uh, today, graze furrow. So, uh, this goes back to where we was at the beginning of the video, of course, when we looked at the um, Facebook page uh, for uh, for um, the uh, coronavirus uh Facebook page. Uh, so red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Furuk, and we're starting off really cold with the upper air temperatures at the moment, down to minus 10 at 850 HPA. So as I say, it's been a long time since we've had the upper air temperatures that cold. We're probably going to have to go back to the beast from the east for the last time we brought the minus 10 Celsius ice firm into the country. That was in uh, the end of February 2018, of course. The next week or so going to keep the upper air temperatures colder than average uh, as well you can see that they are uh, are uh, trending under the red line for the next week as we go towards the end of the first week of april and on into the second week of april we see a clear warming trend so a cold start yes but as we get through to the second week of april clearly we're lifting the upper air temperatures up spring is well and truly uh, commencing then we are going into definite spring-like conditions as we move into the second week of april if the forecast comes off because it's quite extended rain so there is a bit of unreliability about it but it is quite a strong and relatively clear signal that after a cold start the trend is very much upwards as we move towards the second week of april so warming up a lot potentially as we get into the second week of uh, april precipitation wise loads of dry weather coming up there could be wintry showers of course in uh, the next few days or particularly today and uh, probably rain of drizzly uh, bits and pieces tomorrow. But generally, a lot of dry weather as we go through the end of the first week of April. On into a second week of April, of April though, as it's warming up, there are more precipitation spikes then. So it looks like it starts to get a bit more unsettled as it becomes milder. But I think the main story with that uh, ensemble graph is definitely the lift up in temperature that uh, looks like it's on the way for the second week of April. 
Uh, right, so where do we go next? We go just there. So temperature anomalies from the 29th of March to the 6th of April. Colder than average, not a surprise given the graph we just looked at. Uh, so any warming uh, that's going to take place is um, like the end of the first week of April, really. So yes, uh, it's going to be cold on average for the week from the 29th of March to the 6th of April. Precipitation anomalies drier than average uh, as well. So cold and dry really sums it up in uh, the next week. Over in America, it's looking like this. Over the northwestern part of America, this uh, Pacific Northwestern area up here, looking uh, really, really cold up there. Very, very much colder than uh, average. Other parts of the states, nowhere near as dramatic. Perhaps it is a little bit cooler than average through these central areas just here, but some of the states are also uh, a little bit milder than average. It's really this northwestern corner that does look quite dramatically colder than average. Precipitation anomalies for America from the 29th of March to the 6th of April, varying from state to state. Looks very dry down in the southwestern corner, looks wetter in the northwestern uh, corner, where it's coldest, of course. And then through the central and eastern states, probably, if anything, a little bit on the drier than average side. Coming back to home, this is how the GFS midnight run is looking for uh, for Wednesday. Can't show the six o'clock run. Of course, the uh, clocks went forward an hour, didn't they? The clocks went forward an hour um, last night, which means that the model updates uh, are pushed an hour uh, forward. So uh, I, the six o'clock run is updating as we're speaking, but there's not enough of it out yet uh, to make it worth showing you it. So uh, we're just going to look at the midnight run of the... Um, GFS. And this is looking for Wednesday. High pressure out to our west, bringing in this west to northwesterly wind. As we go through Thursday and into Friday, we're having a really good go at putting down a very cold northerly. We're just on the edges of it, just on the periphery. We do get the cold uh, Arctic northerlies into Scotland, I think, not making progress further south of that because this ridge sort of sits just to our south southwest and that's as a block uh, and a stopper against those northerly so the coldest of the air uh, with that northerly uh, arctic incursion is actually plunging down into scandinavia just to our northeast but i think we do pull some quite cold air down into scotland for a time around friday and saturday further south that uh, cold air doesn't dig in and then as we go through the weekend it starts to become a little bit more unsettled and milder high pressure setting up over france low pressure to the north of scotland winds are in from the west so temperatures are lifting up obviously with west southwest but it starts to turn a little bit more unsettled in the north and then heading up towards day 10 we start to get this ridge going to our south and southwest and this is the push up in temperature that we saw on the GFS ensembles, uh, of course, with the upper air temperatures. High pressure rain sets up across central parts of Europe. That begins to pull up much warmer. I say warmer uh, because it's a proper warm air mass. But it's much warmer southerly, southwesterly winds. That will probably see temperatures lifting up to around 20 degrees, I would have thought, there on the 8th of April, if that was to come off. So our, our first time getting into uh, the 20s, perhaps, there as we move into the uh, second week of uh, April. Beyond that, high pressure sticks around, so quite a prolonged spell of pretty warm and dry weather setting up here on this uh, midnight GFS run. As we come to the very end of I mean, it, it looks like high pressure beginning to pull to our west when possibly starting to bring in some cold or cooler air from the northwest. Of course, that's a very long way off. It's over two weeks away. And what this does imply, of course, this is all through the Easter period as well. That's Good Friday, for example. This is Easter Sunday. This does imply that uh, we have a really warm and dry Easter on the way if that comes up. More about that tonight when we do our first Easter update. Uh, then we've also got the GM. So for Wednesday, the high pressure is pulling out to our west. It will still be quite chilly around the middle part of the week, but temperatures gradually lifting up day by day. Uh, still quite cold nights, though. Have a really good go there as we get through to Thursday of uh, taking the high pressure up to Greenland and pulling down an Arctic northerly. But it just doesn't come off again uh, with the GM because we have this ridge that uh, becomes stuck across northern parts of France. And that acts as a stopper against those winds swinging into the north. It only takes a very slight adjustment, though, to bring in northerly winds. So I still wouldn't totally rule out an Arctic blast uh, for the end of this week. But at the moment, it looks like that high pressure pressure sitting over northern France will act as a stopper against those Arctic normalities, except across parts of Scotland, maybe. 
Now, uh, running into next weekend with the GM, and we get low pressure setting up out to our west. So, winds are turning into the south. It's becoming much milder for all of us, but maybe bringing some rain in from off the Atlantic as well. And then heading up towards day 10 with the GM. Again, same idea. High pressure is to our south. Low pressure is out to the north and to the uh, northwest. So, we're beginning to pull up some warmer southerly southwest winds. I think the GM is a little bit more unsettled than the GFS. Um, and the ECM doing everything like that. So again, high pressure pulling out to our west on uh, Wednesday, having a really good go at pulling down this Arctic uh, normally. I think the northerly there on Friday does make a little bit more progress southwards compared to um, what the uh, GFS and the GM were showing. So even down in the south, you may feel quite cold with those north northwesterly winds on Friday. But again, it's only very temporary and then we get this ridge setting up over france which starts to back wind uh into the southwest uh, again next weekend so it becomes much milder through next weekend we get this push of south southwest winds also bringing in some rain from off the atlantic too and moving up towards day 10 that's how we're looking so just a bit more unsettled with the ecm at day 10 compared to the other two less influence from high pressure generally on the mildish uh cybo and um Maybe hinting at raising the pressure uh, to our south and southeast a little bit. So if we could go out a day or so further beyond that, we would probably uh, see higher pressure beginning to take over. I can't show you either today the um, ECM ensembles from the Icelandic Metops because, again, uh, they are not updated as I'm recording uh, the video due to pushing the crops forward uh, by an hour. From uh, from a weather perspective, it would be much easier, really, if we kept the clocks at uh, GMT because it means that everything updates uh, an hour earlier. But when we go through to British summertime, all of the updates from the models and the data, they all get pushed an hour forward which um, means, for example, when we're waiting for the final GFS run, uh, that doesn't finish coming out until uh, close to midnight, uh, the 6pm uh, 6, 6 GFS run. So it's always a bit of a nuisance when we push the um, clocks forward an hour. But never mind, that's uh, that's what we have to deal with. So we will go on to the CFS uh, B2. These are 500 millibar height anomalies broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 29th of March to the 4th of April. The coming week has below average heights as a trough to our east and uh, northeast. A ridge of above average heights out to our west northwest. Winds are in from a north to northwesterly direction. Mainly dry, high pressure blocking off the Atlantic, but uh, quite cold, and we are close to that Arctic northerly blast. All change for week two. This is the 5th to the 11th of April with below average heights setting up to our northwest, above average heights down to our southwest. Winds are turning into west. Looks more unsettled, definitely. We'd be bringing some showers along the spells of rain in from off the Atlantic, but temperatures would be getting a good deal milder. Week 3 is the 12th to the 18th of April with above average heights then. Let's change the colour actually. Above average heights are uh, to our southwest just here. So that's a ridge from the Azores. Below average heights out to the northwest. Winds are from a west southwest direction. That's turning a bit drier uh, and it is quite mild as well. It could even be quite warm. And then we're into week four, which is the 19th to the 25th of April. Again, high pressure is set up to our south. Low pressure is away to the northwest. Winds are from the west southwest. Looks pretty mild and generally you would have thought relatively dry, especially for more southern parts. Which could be a bit unsettled, I suppose, up in the north. But this is very much implying that after a cold start to April, April is going to start on a cold note. After a cold start to April, we should see a recovery in temperature and uh, we should uh, be able to crack on with spring, certainly by the second week of the month. Uh, finally, this tower CFS V2 is looking for April uh, itself. So this is the 700 millibar height normally from a CFS V2 for April 2020. Going for a, not a bad month, really. Above average heights, close to the UK, a little bit to our west. Still lots of low pressure to the north. That's all left over from the polar vortex of doom, of course. It doesn't want to go. Um, so lots of low pressure to our north. But the jet stream is pushing northwards. Means that it's no, nowhere near as unsettled as it was um, like back in February and even in the start of March. It's a drier signal, higher pressure, 
And uh, maybe not overly excited with the temperatures because we're bringing the winds in from like a west to maybe slightly northwesterly direction. So the temperature probably isn't overly exciting, but certainly it's a drier and much more anticyclonic type signal. The temperature anomaly from the CFSV2 for April is close to average. Actually looks a little bit cool, uh, really, across some central parts of uh, Europe. And the precipitation anomaly, no particular signal, although with high pressure sitting just to our west, southwest, you would probably expect uh, a relatively dryish um, sort of month. So uh, that's it for your Sunday Roundup. Hope you found it interesting and informative. Don't forget to give us a like on the video um, and uh, give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well, of course. Check out that Facebook page that we mentioned at the start of the video. The uh, link is in the link is in the description with video at uh, YouTube. So have a look at that Facebook page and um, join it and give it a like and uh, share it if that's what you would want to do. Uh, don't forget to check out the summer update as well. Season 1 Roundup for the summer of 2020. That's going to be placed on the summer updates page this evening. And there'll be a written summary going with that. And we're also going to have the first update for Easter, of course, coming up around 6, 7 o'clock this evening. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.